that was weird. <laughs> Hi! Woo! In today's video, I want to tell you five basic things that you need to know before you dive into the world of digital art. So the first thing you should know about is the difference between resolution and dimension. The resolution of an image is talking about how many pixels per inch there are. The higher the resolution, the more pixels there are, which makes the image more detailed. And the dimensions of an image are the height and width of that image. The dimensions are more about sort of the shape of your surface, so whether you want it to be like a landscape, whoops, that's not a landscape, a landscape, or a portrait, or a square, that's more of what the dimensions are about. With that being said, we'll move on to... Jesus Christ. <coughs> Whoa! Adobe Photoshop is probably the most popular program used to edit or create raster images. Raster images are created using a set amount of pixels, which are basically just colored squares. And the amount of pixels that your image has, like I said before, is related to the pixels per inch that you set as your resolution. So raster images can have a lot of detail and be very high quality. Raster images, like the type of things that you can create in Photoshop, generally allow you to create a really handmade look. Um, that's as handmade as digital can get. The downside is if you try to enlarge a raster image, you start to lose a lot of the detail and the image starts becoming blurry and pixelated and the quality just goes down a lot. So you have to be careful when you're working with a raster image to select a size that fits the purpose of the image from the very beginning because if you try to resize it later on, it's not gonna look as good as you want it to. Because you have to make your images fairly large most of the time, that ends up making the files pretty large too. So those are two things that you need to keep in mind if you're creating raster images. Adobe Illustrator is probably the most popular software used to create vector images. Vector images are created using mathematical equations based on anchor points, lines, and curves. So these vector images can be shrunk down or enlarged without losing image quality, and that's why logos and fonts are usually created using this format. The file sizes are also usually more conservative, but compared to raster files, the vector format is a little bit more limited in the amount of detail you can add to the image. Because of this, vector images tend to have a cleaner, more precise aesthetic than raster images. Usually they're very clean and uh, geometrically precise. So you might have heard of CMYK and RGB. Both of these are color modes and they both have very specific uses. CMYK is normally used in printing. The letters stand for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, which is black. These are the colors that printers use to print a full spectrum of colors using ink. So if you're creating an image meant to be printed in a magazine or a t-shirt or anything like that, the safest mode to save it in is CMYK. RGB, on the other hand, is meant for digital use. If it's gonna be seen on a screen, you definitely want it to be RGB mode. The letters stand for red, green, and blue, and these are the colors used by the screen to create a full spectrum of colors. If you need to convert an image from RGB to CMYK and vice versa, you can easily do this in Photoshop. JPEG and PNG are file formats. They're both good for digital use, so they're both okay if you're gonna be viewing them online or on a screen. For printing, JPEG is usually the best option, but if you're gonna be printing with a printer or something a little bit more official like that, just make sure you ask them first because some places like PDFs better. But for printing at home or something like that, JPEG is probably the best bet. JPEG format is really good for photographs or drawings or very detailed images and PNG is good for line drawings, graphics, or anything with a transparent background. Some people will argue that there is a huge difference between the two, but really the greatest difference is that JPEG does not save a transparent background. If you try to save something with a transparent background as a JPEG, it'll give it a white background. But if you save as a PNG, it'll save that transparency so that if you want to use it somewhere online, your image will look like it's floating on top of the background. If you need to change your file format from JPEG to PNG or vice versa, you can also do this very easily in Photoshop by going to Save As and choosing the file format that you want. And 
the last thing I want to talk about is whether or not you need a tablet because I, I think that one of the most common questions beginners have is do I need a tablet and my answer to that is if you want to create raster images using Photoshop you do want to get a tablet because using a mouse is almost impossible in Photoshop but if you want to create vector images um, using Illustrator you can get away with using a mouse or a trackpad I usually just use the trackpad on my laptop and that's fine. If you'd like to know more about my experience with pen tablets, my first one was a Bamboo Fun from Wacom. It was the first tablet that I ever had and it lasted me for several years. I used it through art school and it was around $100. My new Intuos Pro Medium was about $350, which is a little bit pricey for a beginner. I don't think that you need to spend that much and people in general think that size is really important as far as tablets and I really don't think so. This is the bamboo fun that I had for years and years and it's still in pretty good condition so if I ever need it I, I could still just pull this out and use it. Here's the Intros Pro Medium. It's pretty big but the usable area is actually just right here. Um, so this is kind of just like for show and what I can use in the bamboo fun is this area right here so it's it's not a humongous difference really a little bit but not all that much this is this perfectly fine for a beginner I don't think they sell the bamboo fun anymore if you'd like a recommendation they do have the Intuos pen and the Intuos manga which are I think 80 and 100 dollars and there are other cheaper options out there but I've never used any of them so I can't give you an honest opinion about them I don't know if the quality is good I just think people should know that the size is not that important and you definitely don't need a Cintiq if you're a beginner it's good to invest in a pen tablet for sure but you don't have to sell your soul for it either I hope this video has taught you something useful and if you're interested in jumping into the world of digital art, you should definitely do it. Don't don't be afraid of the computer or the tablet or whatever. It's It can be a little bit daunting when you open up Photoshop for the first time and you're like, what is all this stuff? I really like digital. I've been using it a lot more the last few years. I'm sure you'll like it. If you don't, you can always go back to traditional media and it's all good. I do have more videos planned on the topic of digital media. So if you're interested in seeing more videos on this topic, just subscribe down there. And if you have any questions or you want to share something with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, all the links for everything are going to be down below. Please let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below and if you have any suggestions for future videos. And that's all for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye! I can't... Whoa.